Howdy folks, John here. We're having some fun tonight. We're finally getting lights and some motion into R2's dome. And for anyone who's actually researched R2 builds at all in the Astromech forums, you're probably very familiar with this light set. It's the TC's light set. I purchased this from a fellow on the Astromech forums. He goes by the name Mr. Fubar. That suits me just perfectly as well. So it seemed like a good choice. <laughs> but you can get just bare bone components too and put these together yourself. I'd purchased the pre-assembled one and he's also already put the script into the little micro Arduino that controls all this. As you probably saw when it booted up, you saw this uh, rear logic display give a message and the two front ones. It also comes with the rear and the front PSI light set. And these things draw very little power. I'll just go over to the power supply. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, at, uh, you drive them with 5 volts, no higher than 5 volts. And at 5 volts you can see it's using just around 250 milliamps. Now I've already installed the boards onto the printed parts for the front logic surrounds. And same with the rear. There's little holes already in the uh, printed files to screw the boards on. I also put a little bit of uh, that uh, mastic or antenna glue just to hold them from shifting. This kind of stuff can be cut away if you ever have to fix something. As it turned out, one of the blue LEDs in one of my logics failed quite early on. So I would recommend when you get this set, you know, hook it up to a power supply or whatever, USB, a five volt outlet, and let it run for a day or so and make sure none of the uh, bulbs burn out. They are a bugger to change though. The soldering pins are very close together. Uh, hopefully you wouldn't run into that, but of course my name should also be Mr. Fubar. Now you may notice that I've got a little plastic lens on these and what it is, it's just to diffuse the uh, LEDs a little bit just to give them a little more of a fuzzy look over just straight LEDs, which are quite harsh. And this is to kind of simulate what the uh, original R2 logic lights looked like. All this little thing is, is it's the uh, drawer separators out of those little, um, in those small parts cabinet things. You could also just use some nice thin uh, plexiglass or something and just rub it with a scotch bright pad just to uh, give it that diffused look on the front. Lots of ways to do it, or you don't even have to do it at all if you want to just have the straight LEDs. For the uh, PSIs, in your print files, uh, you can print these two uh, PSI holders. This is the back one. Let's just uh, unplug one of these. And it just fits in there, and then you can screw the collar on. And then you can plug it in. These, of course, are going to be mounted in your R2 before you put the boards on. But this is nice if you ever have to service the board, you can take it out easily enough. And for the PSI diffuser, lots of things you can use. I'm using these little <laughs> white diffusers that came with some under cabinet uh, LED lighting. They were little LED puck lights. And other things you could use for diffusers. There's lots of ideas on the Astromech forms. Plastic juice and milk jugs. A lot of them are in that white diffuse type containers. Now, I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but you can see all the individual LEDs actually showing through the diffuser. And I didn't think that looked too good. I've just gone for a softer look. And what I've done is I found some, uh, this is just diffuser paper. You could probably use parchment paper, even wax paper. I've just uh, cut it so it would fit into the uh, PSI holders and we can see the difference. So we're kind of double diffusing it. So that's kind of the more of the look I want. It's much softer and you don't see the individual LEDs. The camera might be seeing them, but uh, the naked eye isn't. So we're going to get those all glued in. As far as connectivity of the uh, boards, you'll see all this wiring that comes with all these wires. There's lots of information online how to hook it up. Uh, so I don't think I'm really going to have to go into it. It's pretty simple. There's in and out. And the main thing you want to do is always make sure your ground is connected with the negative pin on all the boards. And then the only other thing is on your main logic board. This is your main output. 
There's three rows here. There's an in on the top. You don't even use that one. And then there's an out one and an out two. The out one's in the middle. Out two is at the bottom. Out one feeds the rear PSI. Out two first feeds your front logic. And then the front logic has an in. And again, it's got an out on it. Just make sure the ground goes to the negative. Ground again, going to the negative of the in of the second one. And then on the out of the second one, it's going to the front PSI. As you can see, we're working on R2-D2's hollow projectors tonight. So if you're curious about these things, how they go together, if you're considering whether or not to have moving and working hollow projectors in your own R2 project, if you decide to tackle this, uh, this might give you a little more information about uh, what's involved with them. Not hard, just finicky. And to me, having the moving hollow projectors on R2's dome just adds a lot of personality to them. And I'm just going to have the side ones, like the back one and the front one moving, the upper one on the Pi, that's this one here, uh, it's not going to be moving at all, but I will probably have a light in it. Now in the print files, you're going to find two different hollow files, one for servos and one with just normal friction fit. So this is a normal friction fit hollow projector. The top case is a little bit different and certainly the bottom case is different. The hollow gimbal itself, though, is the same on all of them. And the servo-driven ones, again, the top outer shell is a, shaped a little bit different. It's not as scalloped to allow more movement for the hollow gimbal. And then the base, uh, obviously, is different. And it's already got little cutouts in there for two little micro servos. So you just get those little cheapy 9-gram micro servos. That's all you use. And as you can see, that's how they're mounted. And that's what moves it around. You've got this uh, printed arm that you make out of TPU and the little horns on it. They just snap over the servo horns. And then there's still a hole in it though, so you can fasten it down. Then you can change it if you ever need to. And these fit on the back of the hollow projector on the little uh, light mounts. There's a little uh, ball and socket. It snaps on quite nice, good fit. As far as the finish I used on my hollows, as you can likely tell, I am falling in love with Rub and Buff. Uh, the more I'm using it, the better I'm liking it and the better I'm getting at using it. On these, I just uh, primed them with gray primer. I didn't paint them silver or anything. And I sanded the primer with a thousand grit sandpaper and I found out with this rub and buff, the smoother you get that uh, finish before you put it on, the shinier it's going to get. And uh, the other trick I found, instead of using my fingers or hands to polish it like I did on the dome, I just have a little piece of leather here. This was left over from a uh, rustic chair set that I built for a client and you put a little bit of rub and buff on the leather and then buff it onto your part and it really brings out the shiny. As you can see, I didn't go hog wild on the exterior here or on the inside. Uh, you can still see the print lines in there, but I thought that kind of looks like machining lines. And I didn't put it on too thick on the outside of the upper part of the gimbal extension here. Uh, you can see a lot of the gray primer showing through. Gives it kind of a worn and dirty look, which I kind of like. But do whatever you want. So the lens for the hollow projector, found these uh, half circle glass crystals. They're little magnifiers. Very hard though, I couldn't find any that were the exact right size for the hollow projectors, which are about 37 millimeters in diameter. These little glass crystal magnifiers are about 34 and a half millimeters in diameter. But that actually worked out pretty good. I just uh, made up these little spacer rings. You'll often hear me refer back to Tinkercad throughout this R2 build a lot. Tinkercad is the really simple 3D modeling program I use to make parts. Any monkey can use it. You can drag and drop shapes. You can work with Tinkercad. And uh, these just stretch a little bit to fit over the glass lens and then I press fit them in and they're nice and tight in there. You could glue the lens in of course 
Just don't use CA glue though, because uh, as most people know, as CA glue is drying, it off gases and you get a white film. And very hard to remove it. Now for the lights, I'm using high output Cree XML LEDs. These things are super bright, almost too bright, but you don't have to drive them to their full brightness. I think you can drive these up to uh, 1.3 amps at three volts, of course. But at that brightness, uh, you know, staring into one of these things, if you shine it in someone's eyes, they're likely to throttle you because uh, it's just like looking into a xenon projector headlight. It is so bloody bright. As far as how I've mounted them, these are just the little printed LED surrounds that are also in the print files for the gimbals, and they just fit in to the back of the gimbal. Uh, obviously, they're meant for uh, five millimeter LEDs. I've shortened mine a little bit. The way I've got them mounted in there, because I want to be able to pull these out if I ever have to change an LED, I've just put a little hole in the side and I've got a five millimeter set screw that I push through and that's what holds this into the uh, gimbal. And then for the Cree LEDs, I've just uh, metal epoxied with some JB Weld. It can take the high heat that these things get to uh, just glued some carbon fiber rod on but you could use metal rod, whatever works for you. This is just my method of how to mount it, mount these. And I've just drilled a couple of holes through the light holder here. And then I can slide the little Cree LED into place. And I can move its position. And of course glue it when I found the position. Because what you'll find is uh, as you move this in and out, you can change the beam dispersion pattern depending on where this is placed in relationship to the back side of the lens. Okay, what else? Oh, I'm probably also going to be putting a uh, little heat sink on the back of each of them. These Cree LEDs, they come on one of these star heat sinks, but if you drive them at higher wattages, they will get really hot. So it does, never hurts to put a uh, heat sink on. Just make the light last longer, right? But I think that covers the gimbals. You'll notice that they're a little bit loose, like they're not super tight in here. You could probably put something on the back of the gimbal to tighten it up. You might be able to sand down the mating surface here so it sits a little bit closer, but you don't want these to be tight, of course. Those little micro servos aren't that strong and you don't want to stall them out or have this thing bind. So a little bit of looseness in here is fine, I think. On the upper one on the Pi though, it is really quite loose, loosey-goosey. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I just got some of that leather uh, fabric again. You could use felt or whatever. And I just cut a little ring. And then when you uh, fit the back side, holds it quite secure, but you can still move it around. So I think that's it for the hollow projectors. And seeing that there was more to cover today than I was anticipating, we'll get to installing all this stuff along with all the dome panels in part four. Until then, thanks for watching folks. We'll see you next time.